What is going on YouTube? Today we are going to be taking a look at the D&D Wilds Beyond the Witchlight. The official D&D YouTube channel just released a video talking about how this book is going to be used for Dungeon Masters. So in this video, I'm gonna react to the video, give some of my thoughts and let you know if I am willing to pick up this book or am I just gonna pass on it for now? Hello, I'm Chris Perkins, and I'm one of the principal game architects for Dungeons & Dragons. And this conversation is really aimed at dungeon masters who want to tackle the wild beyond the witchlight. Something we have not done in a hardback 5th edition adventure yet is we're including a section for the first time which is about, hey DM, what type of information do you share with players, and what type of information don't you share with players? And the reason why we're putting that in this adventure is because we realized, to our horror some time ago, that the Dungeon Master's Guide doesn't really do a good job of covering this topic. And it is often a topic among new DMs, is it is not intuitive to them what is meant to be kept behind the screen and what sort of information is meant to be communicated to the players. And so in the introduction, we do go into greater detail about that kind of information. It's things like, do I tell the players what the monster's current hit points are? How do I describe how wounded a monster is? Or should I even be describing how wounded a monster is? It's stuff on that level. And so that section was very important to include here. It doesn't go into exhaustive detail, but it, it gives a little bit of a lift up to new DMs and, and sets them on the right course as far as Here's what you can feel comfortable sharing with your players in terms of information that is going on behind the scenes. And here's the kind of information you want to keep secret to build. Okay, so I feel like that's really up to the DM of how they want to show the players. But when he's talking about how wounded a creature is, I usually do it in the four categories of it. it's taken some hits, looking pretty rough, looking pretty fine, and looking pretty bloodied. So... I personally think that, you know, as a game, you should have an idea visually of what, of how wounded a creature is. It's whatever the DM wants to run, basically. I hope it goes into more depth. I mean, ideally, I would love to see a book that's written on uh, world building. I don't know. It feels a little less than what I expected. I hope that he includes clues for mysteries for games that are supposed to be political things like subtle hints that you're supposed to give your players and then just know when like to give it up basically every piece of prismere that they explore has its own sort of geography and within that geography there are random encounters that are meant to bring to light the sort of atmosphere of the feywild or to put the characters in in the right mood or to impart information that the characters might need. That's what these random encounters are designed for. The reason they're random is because you choose when they happen and you can choose where they happen. And so they're drop-in encounters really that are not keyed to a particular place on the map and don't have to be used a particular time. So they're important, but they're liberating in a way that you can just use them when you want or if you want. Then there are what we call location-based encounters. These are keyed to the map of Prismere and to maps of locations within Prismere. They tend to be more involved and they tend to have bigger stakes or they impart more information to the characters, things like that. There's more to D&D than just the one pillar of combat that we can lean pretty heavily into the other pillars besides combat and still create a fun D&D experience. I feel like the drop-in encounters is something that 5e should definitely go more towards. I don't like the idea of random encounters where you just roll them on a table and they just fight the players for no good reason. I feel like, I mean, ideally, everything should have some sort of place in the game. This looks like it's leaning towards more of the world-building RP side of things. Let's see what's the next section here. This book contains a ton of different tables uh, for DMs to use. There are there are uh, tables that show you know the effects from all sorts of different fey mishaps or what have you. 
But the one that you're probably going to use the most, it's a recurring thing, is the Fey Trinkets table. This has a ton of different entries on it. It has things, you know, from little charming baubles that characters might use to trade with Fey denizens for things because they might not necessarily want gold pieces. So some of these things might be, you know, you might roll and you might get a candle that uh, when you light it, the fire itself, it roars like a bonfire. Or you might get a monocle that, you know, when you, when you look through it, the whole world looks green. It's hard to be inspired when you have no ideas of what to have out there. I do like the idea of trading with merchants not in gold, silver, or platinum. It's uh, something that needs to be done more, at least in my games. I'll, I'll probably take a few of those ideas. The trinkets might be a little much i don't know if it's really needed but if you're running an adventure in this world in the feywild definitely it's worth having something we're trying out for the first time here is the idea of role-playing cards and what they are is small playing card sized cards that have role-playing information for some of the key NPCs in the adventure that the characters are likely to interact with. Each NPC has a card. You can keep these cards behind your DM screen and reference them or sort them as you need to so that information is readily accessible to you. It makes it a little bit easier so that you don't have to do a lot of page flipping in the adventure to go back to that character to find out what they're like and what their notes are. Okay, that's really handy because at least when I ran Curse of Strahd, the one thing that really bothered me was just the amount of flipping I had to do back and forth on the NPCs. Definitely something I want to do for my own game, probably in the future. I like the idea of giving my players something like physically outside of the game so that they remember who these characters are. Because in my own campaign, a lot of the times my players forget who is who. And um, hopefully that would begin fixing some things. Wild is different. Well, that's it for us. Thank you for listening. And I do hope on behalf of our team that you love the wild beyond the witch light and its satellite products as much as we do. Overall, my opinion on this supplement is that trying to optimize, not looking at the book is going to be really cool. I hope those will work for them and they start doing those like card things in other um, in other books and future books. I think it's not a bad pickup. Maybe I'll uh, pick it up when pick it up in the future. At at the very least, I want to give the get the player options on D and D Beyond. But other than that, thank you so much for watching this video. I if you did, please be sure to hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and check out this video over here where I talk about ten D and D things that I wish Dungeon Masters knew.